Hey everyone, this is Keith Snydman from RealityBasedFitness.com. In this video accompanies a blog I'm writing on dysfunctions of the big toe. And what I wanted to do was go over some of the relevant anatomy of, uh, of the foot. I have this model here and I just wanted to just do a little bony anatomy review. I think the foot is a pretty complex structure uh, and it's a little intimidating to some coaches and trainers who are uh, you know dealing with foot issues with people but let's just do a little anatomy review so coming down from the front we obviously uh, this would be the right foot we're looking at here so we've got the we've got the tibia which it would be the larger bone down the center of the lower leg and on the outside or the lateral part of the leg we've got the fibula so these two bones right here meet with this uh, this bone right here which is called the talus bone and they form a connection which actually is your ankle joint sometimes referred to as the talocrural joint and this is where we get basic uh, plantar flexion dorsiflexion of of the foot and ankle so below that we've got the the, the large calcaneus bone and coming down here on the back of the leg would be this would be the calf muscles and the Achilles tendon attaching here and the calcaneus is a really important structure to the whole foot. If we come a little bit more in here, we've got a very important bone here which is in front of the talus bone which is called the navicular bone. And attaching to this bone would be the first, second, and the third cuneiform bone which is often called uh, the medial, the middle, and the I guess the outside or lateral cute cuneiform bone and then on the outside we have a very important bone called the cuboid bone so this whole foot can actually be divided into sections so we've got the rear foot we've got this midfoot here which is comprises right here and then we get into the metatarsals there's five of them and then we've got the phalanges and most of the phalanges have a a distal, middle, and a proximal. And the big toe is a little different though uh, because it doesn't have the same amount. But the real key of, of, of my article is this whole connection right here and primarily right here. This is the first metatarsal phalangeal joint and this is where all the problems are happening. This is where I've had problems for several years, me and my twin brother Franz, uh, which have caused pretty significant changes up the kinetic chain. So the reason this is so important is because this is really like the propulsion part of gait and running. Uh, when we hit the ground, preferably not heel first if we're running, but during walking we will hit heel first, there's going to be what's called pronation, which is a very natural mechanism uh, in this midfoot here, which is going to it's going to stretch all of the, the fascia on the bottom of this called the plantar fascia and there's this plantar aponeurosis attaching to the heel and what happens during gait is it gets stretched and it creates this tension which then helps sort of kind of propulse the body forward off of the big toe okay so this first ray has the plantar flex which then causes dorsiflexion in this joint right here. You have to excuse my, uh, my lack of stability here with the camera. Um, but that's really important because it activates a mechanism called the windlass mechanism which is extremely important. So with someone like me or people who have uh, this inability to extend this toe, and in, in the article I talk about uh, research that says we need to be able to get about 45 degrees out of this minimum for, for healthy gait. Okay, And so when that doesn't happen we don't get this propulsion off the first ray. We go onto the outside of our foot. And so you might see in someone's shoe, if you look at the back, you might see a, a wear pattern where the outside of their shoe is going to be more worn than the inside. So that's something to look for. And there's several ways to treat this, but the really key, key initially is to find out how much de degeneration is going on in this joint if, they, if someone has uh, functional halicus limitus or halicus uh, uh, rigidus which would be quite a bit more uh, degenerated 
and see what kind of mobilization soft tissue work can be done to restore range of motion here. There's also going to need to be probably some mobilizations that need to occur in this midfoot and even in the ankle joint. A loss of dorsiflexion here can be huge. And there's a lot of musculature that needs to be released and even going up to the pelvis and the lumbar spine, which I talk about in the article. Uh, on my site, realitybasedfitness.com. So this is just a brief overview of uh, some of the anatomy, some of the things I thought were really important. Uh, this big toe, this first ray as it's called, is, is really critical to healthy gait uh, and especially healthy running. Uh, and it's, it's definitely something we, as coaches and trainers, uh, we should be looking out for uh, and getting our clients, if necessary, to the appropriate uh, medical or soft tissue, could be chiropractic, osteopathic professionals, physical therapists, phys physiotherapists, depending on which uh, country you're in, that can help to restore the proper motion to this, uh, this vital joint. So I hope this has been informative. Uh, this is Keith Snyderman from realitybasedfitness.com, and I hope you uh, enjoyed the video and the article.